Welcome to an InDesign video. So when doing a new document, um, this is generally what you want. If you look at what this actually is, 51 pika zero. I think this characterizes a sixth of an inch. So what would that be then? Uh, 49, uh, yeah, six to eight and a half by 11. Uh, so that's how that works, right? And that gives you the exact uh, conversion to inches. Uh, so pretty cool, this uh, Pika's. I think this is generally what you want to use in InDesign. It's a conversion tool. So it's, it's not it's not too difficult, obviously, to use uh, all that. All right, let's look at the uh, actual uh, uh, program then. So what we can do, if we could select the text tool, we can draw the box with the text tool. Okay. So there's our box. And you can immediately start typing in it. So what you could is you could just go to this one maybe, fill it with text. And let's see what happens if we press escape. You can see you're gonna go immediately to the selection tool. And this box that appears around it, you can actually, if you go to preferences, change various things within that box. So if you go to, let's see if I can find the one it is. I think it might be to do with the scaling. So that, that corresponds to this, this one here. This UI sizing is grayed out for me, and maybe because my window scaling is, uh, I've got it at like 175%. You can see if I did something like that, you can see the box gets larger. Unfortunately, that's probably a little bit too large, but that's just one thing that you can do. It does make it more difficult to actually click anything there, so I'm not gonna do that. We'll put that uh, back. And you can see, if we move it here, we get some overflow text. So keep in mind, if we have the text tool selected and we're in here, you can actually press control. When I press control, you can see what's happening. It's actually toggling the box around it, which means I can then move the box. So press control and away it goes. Uh, instead of doing what we did there though, if we draw another box out, actually just press it here in the properties panel and do it there instead. So when I press control, I'm actually just, it's just, I'm doing the, it's something which is common to a lot of Adobe programs. Um, obviously, because I've worked with a lot of them, I've noticed this. You can sort of just, just briefly do selection. Uh, but if we did something like this, uh, let's see if we can, so that's selecting both of them. If we do shift control, and we can and we can actually move them within exactly the same uh, configuration. If I move this down here, position them as a, as a unit. Press W as well to see what it looks like in print. I keep in mind this uh, the size of this document is. Uh, you can see it in Pika's here. The size of the document is the same as the letter, the letter preset. And then when we position this here, you can see we can position it against area here. Do a bit more of the overflow text. Draw another box out here, position it there. That's basically the end. If we do the view and the extras, we can see uh, text threads. This was obviously not connected because I just filled it with placeholder text. So only these sections are connected. You also have the option in the uh, type menu as well. You could do the hidden characters. So you can see, is that called the postscript symbol? It might be. Let's go pages. Insert page. Let's do Control D, and let's place a picture onto the page. So Control D opens the place interface here. Uh, this is the new Windows 11 
file explorer, which is kind of snazzy. And I'm going to put in. Uh, got an interesting selection of stuff, don't I? Should put in our Rafflesia flower? Why not? And what we can do is you can see it appears this. And what I can do then is I can just draw how big I want it to be. It's quite a big picture, so it'd probably be happy with any size. You can see the, the percentage as I'm drawing it. So let's say we put it at 25%. There it is. All right, so you can see with the selection tool, if I say I wanted to just get around the flower, I can just uh, drag these handles like that. And you can see we just got the flower there in the middle. Also, you can press uh, Control 2, uh, say Control 1, do some different scalings. If you just press Control and then a, and a, I think it's Command or Mac, is it? I think so. Uh, let's actually go back to Control 0. We're going to double click on the image. There you can see the actual size of the image. So you can see double clicking is going to let you see the whole size of the image. And it's going to toggle between the two states there. Let's now, let's, now let's try holding down the image. Now you can see. So, if, say I bizarrely wanted only the branch, or maybe I wanted a more artistic approach to it. If I wanted to put just the side of it with the branch, or I wanted to show the the, the uh, label showing what planet is. I could do something like that. I pretty don't want to do that, if I'm being honest there. Okay, that is called repositioning the image within the frame. Okay, now I'm going to press Control Shift A, deselect everything. Got selection tool. Now I'm moving the image and the frame. Double click. There's the frame. So it's it's moved along with it. Deselect. Move it up here. This thing in the object menu, the fitting button. Fill frame proportionally. This gives you a bunch more different object options as well. Bit frame to content. Okay, let's press Control D one more time. I just wanted to look at this Doris Day one. So if you just click on it, you can see it just puts the whole thing in at hundred percent. That's the size of this. And what if we wanted to just uh, change some things about this? You know what? It's like this is how much space I've got. I've only got this amount of space. So what we could do is we could go to the object menu and the fitting and do fit content to frame. And that's going to position our image in the uh, position there that we want. You may notice if I do something like this, it doesn't do what you think it might do, right? It's just it's just cropping the image. So what you actually need to do is if you wanted to resize it, you need to press Control Shift. Then you then you're in the resize mode. Then I can resize the image how I want, right? So I could say I want it actually all the way to the side here, all the way over here. We have to have Control Shift held down. That way we're essentially changing the image and the and the frame as well at the same time. Now if I just press Control, you can see it's, it will still work. It doesn't give you that. That's, you know, it's going to sort of squeeze it in there. Whereas if I do Control Shift. See, so Control Shift is doing this stuff, but Control just lets you do this. Press Control Alt less than, Control Alt greater than. Uh, you actually don't really need. It does. It seems to do even with Control. It seems to do it proportionally. Um, so you can do something like that. So I'm just I'm just holding down Control and then pressing the greater than key, holding down Control, pressing the less than key. So the scale percentage in the transform panel as well will do the same thing. You can see they're locked at the moment. See it constantly resets to 100. So we can make the width like 40 peakers. And so we want the height to be 30 peakers. And then we could, was it Control or E? Yeah, Control or E um, to do the fitting on the constraint. There. All right, and I think, yeah, I think that's going to do for this first uh, look at InDesign. Be doing plenty more on this. So thanks for watching.